welcome. Dwelling on it's not going to make it any better. So what will? Well, can't you talk to Mr Fleming? Ask him for some grace on the rent. We've had grace, Shirley. Six months of it. Set the table, Tom. There's a good lad. Yes, I am, thank you. Where's P.C. Bradley? Oh, he'll be keeping himself busy, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever do it, Constable. What are you doing here? Missing you. Are we going out to dinner tonight? I don't know. I was just hanging around at home and I thought, I can't wait that long. <laughs> Jackie. What are you going to do? Have me up for wasting police time? a man of many talents, David. But you're not always appreciated by those who are close to you, are you? No, often I'm not. Don't worry. Your luck is going to change very soon. Is it? Come with me on a journey into the future, David. Are you ready? Beauty, isn't it? Why don't you buy it? Can't afford it, Tom. How do you know you can't? It'll be a special deal, Malcolm. I don't think so, thanks. I mean it. Pay me in instalments. Malcolm? No. Not at the moment. Thanks. Come on. G. Is there someone in your life whose name begins with G? Oh, yes, there is, actually. And are you very close to her? Oh, not, not the one I know is a man. No, David, I see a woman. I see a woman with auburn hair. And if you haven't met her yet, you're going to. Soon. A man. I see water. I see a journey across water. And afterwards, you'll want for nothing. Love, no money. And no will your nearest and your dearest. Blimey. You too could be a toy soldier. <laughs> Get lost with you, Cleggorn. And you paid two bob to listen to that load of rubbish. Who said it's a load of rubbish? David. 
The only way you're going to make any money is to work hard for somebody who's got your best interest at heart. You do know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, aren't you? In one. I mean, you, you've got more chance of knitting fog if you think you're going to get out the note. And the winner of the competition to guess the weight of Ronnie the Ram is David Stockwell. Did you hear that? You yeah, probably made a mistake. So please remember to collect your prize hamper before you go. David Stockwell. I've won a hamper! Well, our luck, it'll probably be a hamster. They must be terrified, them Russians, with their atom bombs. Knowing that over in the Yorkshire village there's a bunch of lads like you that dress up and play silly beggars at a church hall. Now look, Claggorn! Right. What's going on? Just admiring your son's uniform. Just leave him alone. You think I've taken the mickey? I'm not. It seems a bit pathetic, all this, but compared to what you got up to in the war, this lad is VC material. Dad, what's he talking about? He's a shirker! And everyone in the village knows how yellow he is. Yeah, well, he may be, but I'm not! <laughs> you have no idea, Clegon. No one has. If you knew what people like me really did in war, you wouldn't come out with things like that. Come on, break it up. I just break it up. That's all it's about. What? No idea, Sarge. He started it. Arrest him. Yeah, they'd both better come down to the station, don't you? Right, Sarge. Come on. I'm sorry, love. All right. Will you come in for a cup of tea? Yeah, why not? Dad says we're to get on and mend that fence. Now? Yes, now. Them sheep get out again. Clegg will probably run them over next time. Leghorn denies starting the fight. You don't believe him, do you? Well, I hardly think that Malcolm would start a punch-up. Oh, yeah? Why not? Well, he's always the quiet sort. He avoids trouble if he can. It's part of the problem, I think. How do you mean? Well, there have been stories about him for years. People say that he didn't pull his weight in the war. Uh, but, but he was a farmer. He wouldn't have been called up anyway, would he? No, he was in the Home Guard. There was talk that he was a pacifist, that he wouldn't turn out on parade. But it was only tittle-tattle. So, uh, what do we do now? Well, unless Malcolm presses charges, there's not much we can do. What an afternoon. Come here. Oh, oh John. I don't think I can take much more of this. Oh, it'll be all right, love. It will. I wish I could believe that. You must. It's not as if you'll be stuck with him forever. I don't know. How can I leave him when he's in this state? I can help. Well, for a start, that tractor. Look, I've worked out some HP terms, and if there's any other equipment he needs... It's very good of you, John, but I don't... Try and persuade him. If he can get this place on its feet again, you won't feel so bad about leaving. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, then. OK. What did Malcolm mean during the fight? When he said if people really knew what he did in the war. I've no idea. Well, tomorrow. What did Clegon mean? What? About Dad being a coward in the war. Oh, you won't understand. Thing. What's up with it? It's done for, that's what. Go and see if Dad's back. Man up! 
never get his hit! What are you doing here? They had to let me go. Your dad wouldn't press charges. <laughs> you what? He were too fricked. Face facts. You lot are finished. Exhausted. Yeah. Well, that's what I get for agreeing to run that beer tent this afternoon. At least you had someone to hold the fort. You look lovely. You're going somewhere nice. Mike and I are going out for dinner. Lucky you. You look like you could do with some fun. Well, Andy's not going to be back for weeks. Well, so let's have a girly night. I could speak to Maggie. Yeah. Why not? Tomorrow? I'm sure we could charm someone into looking after the bar, couldn't we? Well, maybe. I'll think about it. Right. You're on. Welcome. I'm wondering where you'd got to. You're not top bar. Setting up sheep dip for tomorrow. Tom was looking for you early on. He thought he saw you down at the quarry. Not this afternoon, no. Tractor's broken. What's up with it? It's finished. Like we are. Robert. It's true. Or at least it will be the way he's carrying on. Don't start, Robert. He's standing by while Cleghorn drives us out of here. That's not true. Well, then why didn't you press charges against him? Because it'll only make things worse, Robert. You're dreaming, Dad. You said it yourself. A few more weeks and you're bankrupt. And Cleghorn gets this place. I wanted to take over this farm, Dad. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Of course it does, son. Well, then why don't you stand up to him? Give us an encore, Oscar. What are you gawking at? I'm not. She's gawking at me. Who is? Oh, woman, there, look. She's smiling at me. Not surprising. First time I saw you, I laughed out loud. Now, Mr. Blayton? Yeah? Well, well, what colour is, or is Auburn? Well, as far as I remember, it's a kind of red, I think. There's a kind of red. Well, I, I, what if her name began with a G? Why don't you go and ask her? She'll probably think you're crackers. She'll be right. All right, I will. Ooh, she's coming over. I believe you two gentlemen are in the business of doing odd jobs. Yeah, well, it, 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 it all depends on what they are, Mrs. Uh... Evans. Gloria Evans. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, I'm Claude Greengrass. This is my chief of staff, David Stockwell. Pleased to meet you, David. Gloria. Uh, I mean, Mrs. Evans. Uh, how, how odd are these jobs, then, Mrs. Evans? Well, why don't you both come over to my house tomorrow at 9 o'clock? Bella Vista Cottage, on the Whitby Road? I'll show you what I have in mind. Yeah, well, if I can get him going, we'll be there. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'll start putting stuff in your tea.
So, you didn't actually see anyone then? I didn't need you. It's obvious who did this. Oh, yeah? Who? Well, Colborne wouldn't have the nerve much with that loony son of his. Well, I can see why your suspicions lie in that direction, Mr. Claghorn, but let's keep an open mind, shall we? Well, who else could have done it? So, have we any idea what type of gun these came from? No, but uh, let's get them checked out anyway. Right, Mr. Cleghorn, we'll, uh, we'll go down to Mr. Colborne's now, but uh, in the meantime, try and keep calm, eh? Keep calm? Do you know how much that tank cost me? I want whoever did this arrested. I can't believe Robert would do anything so stupid. What about you, Mr. Colborn? I hope to God he wouldn't. So, to the best of your knowledge, he doesn't have any kind of firearms in his possession? Not here, no. What kind of rifle do you use? A 7.62 SLR L1A1. They don't let us bring him home, you know. Robert, what's going on? Never you mind. Get back to bed. They keep them strictly under lock and key. Well? Nothing. What did I tell you? Right. Well, thanks very much for your help. Uh, we'll be in touch. You must think we're mounting goats. Right on time. Of course. You're dealing with professionals. <laughs> Come in. <sighs> I think I can see why you want us. I need the whole place clearing out and redecorating. A couple of weeks, we could have this place looking like a palace. A couple of weeks? But I need it doing by the weekend. Two days? I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs Evans, that, that's impossible. Well, then what am I going to do? I've been renting a house across the valley. I need to vacate and have all my furniture out by the end of tomorrow. Well, can't, can't, can't you stay somewhere else? I don't really know. I've just separated from my husband, you see. Oh, that's awful, Gloria. I mean, Mrs Evans, isn't it, Mr Greengrass? It's been very distressing. I'd set my heart on moving in this weekend. You know, I feel sure we could do it if we really tried. Oh, do you think so? Well, that's wonderful. Of course, I'd pay you generously. Uh, no, I, I suppose we, we, we could do it if we, like, cancelled some of the jobs we're working on at the moment. Right. Well, shall I show you what I have in mind, then? Which jobs are we working on at the moment? Hypothetical ends. Get upstairs. Go on. Go on. You right, then? Where are you going? Get some work done. We can't give up. See you, Dad. See ya. Malcolm. You know that tractor John Bennett has for sale? We can't afford it. Well, he says if we give him a small deposit now, he says we can pay the rest off over two years. He says he can let us have other equipment too on similar terms. I don't well, want any more debts. Well, what about that insurance policy my mother took out for us? I thought we'd been through this, Shirley. I know. And I know what I promised her. But I'm sure she wouldn't disagree if she'd ever imagine we'd get ourselves into this situation. What if we were to cash that in, eh? I'll pop into town this morning and I'll talk to John Bennett about it. I don't know what I'd do without you. And if you could just manage a quick lick of paint on the front door, too. Oh, right, Mrs Evans. David, call me Gloria. Oh, thank you, Mrs Evans. <laughs> I mean, Gloria. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. It's all coming true. David, I wish you'd stop going on about it. Th 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 this has got nothing to do with what Madam Thingy told you. Well, she's got red hair. Well, and her name begins with a G. It's coincidence, isn't it? That's what they work on, these clairvoyants. They're, they're all con merchants. They can make outfit out if they try hard enough. Now, come on.
The spent cartridges we found have been sent away for analysis, Sarge. And have you contacted the local TA to see if any of their weapons have gone missing? No, yes, Sarge. Well, I suggest you do so immediately. What about Malcolm Colborne? Well, we know he doesn't like Cleghorn, but it's difficult to believe he's a sort of man who'd do this. Hmm? What makes you think that? Well, well, for a start, Alf reckons that for all PC Ventress' years of experience and local knowledge, we cannot conduct our investigation into this incident merely on the basis of his opinion. Coffee for you, Sarge. I'll bring the tractor up later. Thanks, John, for being so good about this. Oh, that's all right. Just so long as you know why I'm helping. I just want you to feel free to leave him. What's this? I don't know. It was in the file. Looks like some sort of training manual. Must be from the Home Guard. Well, I was in the Home Guard. I never saw anything like this. What is it? Uh, mind if I hang on to it? Uh, I'll take a look sometime. And who knows, maybe he did some training that I didn't. Well, better go. See you later, then. You do it. Do what? Go to Clegghorn's last night. You did, didn't you? No. You did. I know you did. I saw you go out, and I heard you come back. It's all right. I'll keep it a secret. Dad's got secrets too. What are you talking about? He was at the quarry yesterday. He says he wasn't, but he was. Oh, belt up, will you? <laughs> Hi. Wow. Mr. Bennett's given us special terms. It's great, Dad. Anything else I can do, let me know. Thanks. You're welcome. Right, right. Yep. And, uh, and your name is? Major General Colson. Okay. Um, okay, and when was this? Sarge. Right. Alf, I hope you didn't take my remarks amiss earlier. Yep. Oh, no, Sarge. You do know that I regard you as an indispensable member of this team? Thank you. Uh, great. I think that's fine. Would you like one? Thank you. A pickle early. Thank you very much for your help. Very nice, too. That was the local TA headquarters. It seems a 7.62mm self-loading rifle did go missing uh, last year after a training exercise. Hmm. If ballistics confirm that the spent cartridges found at Cleghorns were from a 7.62 rifle, we'd better make another search for the weapon up at Colborne's farm. Why haven't you charged him? Our inquiries are still ongoing, Mr Cleghorn. It was Colborne's son, I'm sure it was. You may well be, Mr Cleghorn. Unfortunately, my officers need to have proof. What if you don't have any? What then? That kid should be behind bars, and you know it. Oh, uh, that's wonderful. Uh, well, he's doing very well, but uh, I'll tell you something. I, I, I still think we're going to be pushing it but to finish it by tomorrow. Oh. Well, unless we work through the night, Mr Greegrass. Well, that would be so good of you. Uh, well, it needs must, but but unfortunately, I, I, I won't be able to stay because I've got to go and start working on some of our other commitments. Oh, I understand, Mr. Greengrass. You go. Yeah, well, well, don't worry about David though. He, he works faster on his own because he doesn't have to bother about me trying to worry him up all the time. I shan't leave him on his own all night. I'll stay and keep his morale up. Yes, well, keep in mind on what you're doing. I'll, I'll probably pop back during the night. Oh, no, you don't have to do that, Mr Greengrass. Really? 
It's silly letting yourself get down just because Andy's away. I know. And I know I'm going to see him soon. So what's the problem, then? Things are going all right between the two of you, aren't they? Well, yeah. Better than ever. But that's the problem, really. Well, how do you mean? Well, I suppose if things carry on like this. Are you talking about marriage? No, don't be silly. Well, OK, maybe. <laughs> but how would we manage? I mean, what would it be like in the pub living with Oscar? <laughs> I see what you mean. <laughs> and anyway, Andy's contract in the North Sea is only short term. He might have to go anywhere for his next job. Well, so go with him. What, and leave Aidensfield? Yeah. Well, how can I? What about the pub? Oh, Jeannie, you can't be tied to that pub forever. We're talking about your future here. But if you left, I'm sure there's plenty of people that'd be willing to take over the licence. Maybe even Oscar. Well, suppose. No suppose about it. Seems such a big step, though. I mean, what do you think, Jackie? What about marriage? Yeah. Well, it's a huge step, but I can thoroughly recommend it. And if it's what you really want. I guess it is. Well, then it's time to seize the moment. To the future. Cheers. Ready, David! Oh, I'll be right down. Mind you working so late? No, no, I'm not married. Really? Such a waste. A man of your qualities. My qualities? Loyal, hard working, full of integrity. <laughs> so many men are rats, my husband amongst them. Had an affair. Left me for a younger woman. I'm so sorry. No, that's all right. I'm sure it won't be too long before I find someone to fill his shoes.
Where's Mum? She's standing at the police station. They're still talking to Robert. Clegon saying it weren't him. What are you going to do? I don't know. Weren't even insured. Mum says it still might be covered by Bennett's insurance. Doubt it. But it could be, and you better ask him. What is it? Oh, John. I don't know where to start. Oh, come on. Hearts on a stray. Deep in hurt when they go. I went away just when you Tell you exactly what bits we've got this year. Nice. Give us a list. Oh, yeah. oh. oh, keys under the flower pot. Yeah. Well, it's not going to jump into your hand, is it? Uh, yeah, give it this. Stuff in here. That barometer must be worth a few quid. It's not on the list. It's on mine. Hey, no, we can't go nicking stuff off Gloria. We won't be nicking stuff off Gloria, will we? I'll be nicking it off Mrs. Evans. Well. Well, what? How long has it been going on? What? You and Bennett. Did you manage all right last night, Oscar? You know me, Gina. Being in charge is what I'm good at. So you wouldn't mind doing a bit more of it, then? Provided some of the profits came to me, I wouldn't. Why, are you trying to tell me something? Well, suppose... Suppose circumstances changed and you had the opportunity to become the licensee as well as the owner. How would that come about? Now, this wouldn't have anything to do with your interest in a certain young man from Ireland, now, would it? It might be. Well, you see, things are starting to move pretty fast with me and Andy. And the long and short of it is, I might want to leave Aidensfield. In which case, the licence had come free and... Would you really leave Aidensfield? Well, yeah. I'm thinking about it. Now, what would you say if I did? <sighs> well, I'd be upset and sad, try to talk you out of it. And then I'd realise I was just being selfish. We all have to move on at some stage in our lives, Gina. All of us. Me included. I think you must do whatever will make you happy. And if that means leaving Aidan's field, you must do it. Thanks, Oscar. I'll just have to get used to being the licensee, as well as the landlord. <laughs> you drove me to it, Malcolm. What sort of a life do you think it's been living with you all these years? But him, Bennett, of all people. 
No wonder you're able to persuade him to help me out. I didn't persuade him. He's a good man, Malcolm. If you knew a fraction of the truth about him, you wouldn't say that. What do you mean? He's evil. I found that out 25 years ago. Found out what? That he'd betray anyone if there was something in it for him. That's not true. He wanted to help you. Only so you could feel less guilty about having an affair with him. That's not fair. Leave me alone! You're going nowhere. Mr. Bennett? That's right. Sorry to bother you. We're making some routine inquiries in the area, and I just wondered if you'd sold a container like this recently. Not that I recall. Well, it's pretty distinctive. Surely you'd remember. Yes, no? Well, we sell all kinds of stuff, Constable, but I honestly don't recall selling these. Well, like I said, it's just a routine inquiry. You don't sell paraffin to a Mr. Nathaniel Cleghorn of Shiroak's farm, by any chance? No, he doesn't trade here. Well, that's odd, because he told us he did. Well, uh, not for years, anyway. He goes to Ayers, you could ask there. And now, if you'll excuse me. Hello? John. It's me. Shirley. Look, I can't talk now. You've got to come now, please. What? Meet me by the quarry. Near Bridge Lane. Shirley, look. Just be there. Upstairs. Now! We're getting a few quid, that's all. Yeah. She said I'd be finding love as well as money, though. Yeah, she also said you were going to cross water before you found it. Yeah, what do you call that, then? I don't really think this is what she had in mind. Bennett lie about a paraffin can. No idea. Is it conceivable he has some sort of grudge against Malcolm? Well, I don't think there's any love lost there. Bennett supplied the tractor, didn't he? Yeah. Ash Fiddley Police. Right. I see. We're on our way. she done? That truck. It's full of furniture. Our furniture. <laughs> Looks different with a bit of gear in, don't it? <laughs> Where's Gloria? I'm not sure. Oh, this is monstrous. You've no right to walk into my house and take this. Well, you'd better get it all loaded up and taken back, do you hear? You are. You'll do nothing of the kind. This furniture stays here. It's mine. Oh, you know perfectly well it isn't, Gloria. I gave you half what we had. It's not my fault you fritted it all away. Excuse me. C can somebody tell me exactly what's going on? This woman is my wife. Ex-wife. I don't know what she's told you. I bet none of it's true. She's doing this just to spite Nicola and I. And why shouldn't I after what you did to me? You promised us you'd move, Gloria, and leave us alone. Oh, as if you'd shake me off that easily.
So, you had the guts to come. I wondered. I'll take legal action against you, Gloria. You can't. This is harassment. Uh, 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 look, look, um, I, I, I've got a feeling we're, we're in the way, so if, if you'd like to settle up with us, M Mrs Evans, we'll, we'll make ourselves scared. Settle up? She's bankrupt. She hasn't got a bean. I would have if you'd paid me proper maintenance. I do pay you proper maintenance, Gloria. Sure. No, you don't. I haven't had anything for weeks. I do, and you spend it all. Oh, what do you expect me to do with it? Play me clairvoyant. Oh. A bit nice to solve it come true, though. David, you don't have to go to clairvoyance to predict your future, because I will. And I'm going to predict if you ever go to another one, you'll get my boot up your backside. Get in the truck. No, not the car. Not any. Where's Shirley? Never you mind. So this is it, then, is it? It's your bunker. Your ammunition store. It is, isn't it? You know that you're an auxiliary. Part of Churchill's secret army. Dreaming you could take on the Nazis if they invaded. Yeah. How do you know? Oh, some kind of manual on how to make all manner of bombs and booby traps. Shirley found it. Has my name in it, Malcolm. Oh, so you worked out why, did you? Execution? That's just what you deserve. Oh. Who did you people think you were? Deciding like little tin gods who you were going to kill if there was an invasion. What chance would there have been for any resistance in this country if we'd allowed traitors and collaborators like you to live? Who says I was a traitor? We knew. Everybody did. But what I never imagined in a million years is that you persuade Shirley to betray me too. I should have put you in that barn when I set fire to it. So you started the fire? Why do you think I wasn't going to get even when I saw my name on your execution list? Yeah, well, it's too late now. <laughs> Which way, Tom? The quarry over there. Right, Bellamy, make sure Mrs. Colburn's all right. Set. Tom, take us to the quarry. I'm only doing what should have been done years ago. Oh, Marco, you've got two minutes. Two minutes to think about what you've done. I loved Shirley. Everything else might have been going wrong for me. I always told myself, at least I've got her. Now you've taken that away from me. Now there's nothing left. This way. Malcolm, Malcolm, we can sort this out. I told you. It's too late. <gasps> Don't come any nearer. What have you done with him? He's only going to get what he should have got 25 years ago. Tom's told us all about it, Malcolm. We know you were handpicked because of your loyalty and courage. No one understood. No one knew what I went through. We had to pretend to be shirkers and layabouts so no one could possibly suspect what we were really doing. We understand, Malcolm. We, we understand how difficult it must have been for you. We couldn't tell anyone. Friends, wives, children. You can't imagine what that was like. It's what he deserves. It, 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 it may be, Malcolm, but the truth's out now. No one's going to believe lies about you anymore. You'll be remembered as a hero. L like you should be. But don't be remembered for killing a man you admit you think was worthless. Malcolm. Put the gun down. Malcolm. Please, Dad. Let's go. 
just on the table. Come on, come on. Come on. Thank you.